Netherlands from Team Carplounds. So last November we visited Gigantica uh, for a nice saw show with uh, Corda and we did some lake mapping and Danny Fairbrass mentioned something about the bait bog uh, rig to use with the Arctic 4 and uh, he's going to explain it uh, on the show, the big one. Do the hooking first, all right? Yeah. Um, so what, what size hooks do you normally use? Um, normally six. Right, okay, we're going to use a two. Okay. Right, much, much bigger hook. Yeah, a big hook, I think, their mouths are so big, a big hook snags in their mouth better. So, and the thing is as well, the hook's going to be laying on the bottom, so it doesn't really matter how big it is. It's not visible to the fish like it is on a pop-up where it's yeah. up. Yeah. So, size two curve. The material is basically, it, it's a coated braid, but we're not going to strip the coating away. It's just going to stay solid all the way through, yeah? So the, fir the first bit of it is probably the trickiest bit of the whole rig. So what you, basically I'm going to tie a whipping knot onto the top of the hook to make a D-rig, yeah? So you make a big loop underneath the hook like that, yeah? And then with the front of the, this is the trickiest bit, with the front of the loop, just go around the hook once, going up the hook, yeah? yeah? And then around again, but just cross over. You see like a form almost a figure yeah, of eight there. Nice Don't pull it too tight. And then just three or four turns round, like that, going up towards the, the shank of the hook. And then that little tag end basically pulls that knot tight. And that's, it's, it's basically the same knot they use to tie uh, eyes on rods. Same thing. Right, so you get it up near the top, top of the shank there, and then really pull it tight and then it, then it won't move. If you pull it really tight at the start and try and move it up the hook, you'll really struggle to move it up the hook because it grips so tightly. So we're just crimping process. We'll, we'll, if you pull it tight, it just strips the coating off and the hook link just comes yeah. undone. Yeah, but this stuff, because, because it's a different kind of coating, this, this crimps really well, this hybrid stiff crimps really well. And it's such, like fishing it straight through like that, it's such a robust hook link. You can play fish after fish when it's snaggy and everything and it just won't go. We're just going to crimp a loop in the end of it, it's just a very, very small loop. Yeah, you've got to line up the rounded parts of the crimp, top and bottom, with those grooves in there like that. Just that. Only that. That's it, squeeze it tight like that, that's it, done. And if you crimp it wrong, which everybody does from time to time, yeah. when you test it, it will immediately come undone, yeah? So if you do it right, it, will, it, it just will not, it will not snap or, or slip or anything. I'm hoping because we're filming it doesn't yeah. go. <laughs> right, so I'm going to pull that. Yeah, that's looking that isn't yeah. going. That isn't going. Okay. Now, this material, right, we rate it at 20 pounds. So if you tie a knot in it, it goes at 20 pounds. If you crimp it, it snaps at 30 pounds. So it makes it 50% stronger yeah. by crimping it. Yeah? Right, so that's our hook link done. Now, what I'm, the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit of putty in the middle of the hook link. And uh, it's really important that it, it goes in the middle or the lead side of the middle not the hook side, right? I and mean, basically what that will do is it will, it will help the whole hook link to lay flat on the bottom. If you, if you, look, I used to put putty up here, yeah. loads of putty up here. And what, what can happen is that bit sinks before that bit can sink and you still get a loop up off yeah. the bottom, yeah? So we've learned from the underwaters that if you put it halfway or that side of halfway, it always sits out nice and straight. And I put quite a bit of putty on and then, and then just trim so he's got quite a big bit there, yeah? The edge is off, being obviously taking care not to cut the hook link. No. Always put your spare bits back in there. Do you use putty on your hook links or not? Yeah, always. Yeah? The, 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 I don't, I don't, when I'm casting, I don't use putty a lot because I find if anything's going to tangle, it's the putty that it tangles around because it's soft. Once it wraps around, it sort of bites in, so I tend not to use it. But with the bow, obviously you're not, you haven't got to worry about that. You don't have the problem. You don't have the problem, no. Soft landing. Yeah. So you see, it's it's the lead side of halfway. Yeah. Yeah. This this side of halfway. So when that goes out, it will it will always kick this away. Yeah. Right. Okay. Lead system. Right. So a cog lead. Have you ever used one of them? No. Not yet. Right. Okay. So if you if you're fishing with a remote boat and if you're dropping it onto a hard bottom, I wouldn't ever use anything but this. It's that much better than a normal lead system. But if you're fishing on a gravel bottom then I use a cog lead basically, right? So we get so a which bit... Which weight uh, do we use? I use, well, with, with a bow it doesn't matter, does it? You know, you can yeah. use as heavy as you want. I mean, they go up to eight ounces. If you were fishing oh. at real long range, you want a heavy lead so you can keep a tank. But I, I've done a four in this situation. But because you're picking the lead up from the middle of the lead, 
it feels a lot more than a normal four ounce lead. Whereas a normal, in a, on a lead clip rig, you're picking the lead up from the thin end, aren't you? Yeah. You know, so that, and there's quite a bit of movement before the fish feels the full weight, yeah? Whereas with this cog one, once uh, you see once it's set up, you're picking the lead up from the center instantly. And that gets you more bites. I'm 100% yeah. convinced it gets you more bites. You're gonna be like even more the local hero when I show you this. <laughs> right, okay, I'm just gonna get some mono line. Do you use braided line or do you use mono line? Or? Sometimes, mono line. Mono line normally, yeah. right, okay. Um, another real edge would be to use sinking braid, right, yeah. but with a mono leader. So you get the invisibility side of the mono, but the no stretch of the braid. Yeah. And that combination, again, well, there's a lot of lakes in England you can't use braided real line because people use it wrong and they leave loads of it littered in the lake. But you, you normally haven't got that problem, have we you? Don't have a no, so, but I, I've used braid straight through and it's great, but I think it, it's only great if you can hide it. So if you've got any ups and downs on the bottom or you're fishing very tight lines, the braid can be running through the middle of the, the water and it's very visible. Yeah. But if you, if you have a mono leader on the end, that invisibility side of it is still there. And because the mono lead is 10 metres long, it doesn't matter if a fish 20 metres from the rig sees the braid, does it? It's only the ones that are really yeah. close, close by, yeah? So what I'm going to do is just put a bit of tubing on. you're dropping it out of the boat, you don't need to use anti-tangle tubing. But this is more to protect the fish when you're playing the fish yeah. than it is for anti-tangle, yeah? So obviously the line is very thin and that can get under the scales and flip the scales yeah. off, right? And they will, the, the, a, a fishery guy I know says the scales can grow back four to six weeks they can they'll grow back yeah but you don't want to take them you off you don't want to no obviously not so just a, a, a reasonable length of tubing not too much and then i'm going to put a rubber connector on just a standard rubber connector that these are numbered yeah so that's number yeah. six and that's number six on there as well you see oh yeah yeah so that so the length of these is critical yeah it has to match the size of lead you're using yeah so right so all we need is standard lead clip set up so just one, one rubber connector uh, to the lead clip and obviously stop the lead coming off straight away. Lead clip. And then that little boom, that's what we, that's what we tie on to attach um, the, the hook link to the lead. Into the, the swivel should click into that, oh, yeah. yeah? To hold it in nice and tight. And then all I've done is cut that to a little angle, you see, like, yeah. just like a knife edge. And then all that does is it just pokes into there under the lightest of tension, that's it. Right, so that's, you see where that's hanging, yeah. it's, it's, not, it's not too tight, so the lead's not hanging at a funny angle like that, and it's not too baggy, it's not, it's not snaking around, it's just exactly the right length, yeah? I'm going to steam this straight, yeah? And basically, if you catch a fish, you, if, if the hook's all right, it's still sharp, you could reuse it, but you might find it's gone a bit curly. Yeah. I just steam it again over the kettle. It goes perfectly straight again, and you can use it again. Right, so putting the bait on is really, really simple now. A uh, 15. I have used a size two with a 15 mil bait. It looks horrible, but the fish don't know, you know. And it's and it's still I've still had loads of fish on it. Right, so <coughs> baiting needle through just goes onto that the eye of that swivel that and then you pull the two, the two bits you pull the two bits of braid of uh, sorry floss through there because, again because you're not casting it there's there's no real there's no real pressure on that bait so I just cut the tag ends off and then if, if you burn them so one last thing we need which I probably I need a sleeve to go over the top of this just to neaten it all up so I'll, I'll get that and then uh, and then we'll finish the rig two seconds so just a, a little tapered sleeve, yeah, close the gate up and then just pull it on like that, rather than having to fiddle about poking it yeah. through, you know, and then joining it all together, just big enough so it fits on the, on the double yeah. bit of wire, the double thickness, that's really important that it's on there. And what this is, is there to do is to stop it from getting back off, yeah. just to cover it up, yeah. And then that goes back into there. Yeah, and this, this is the beauty of it. You're picking the lead up yeah. from the heaviest point. The whole lead's being picked up instantly. Now, in a fishing situation, the fish is he's not going to be, he's not no. going to pick up the bait and go up like that and do that, but he's probably going to go that way, isn't it? But yeah. it's still, it's pulling. It's directly. Imagine, yeah, you might, imagine if that lead is slightly into the muddy bottom as well, and it's trying to pull that whole thing out of the mud. 
that is really, really aggressive at hooking them. And if I if I put this hook in my finger, I mean, bear in mind this is size two, put it on there. If I put it in there, I can't lift that lead. It, no. That is hurting. Yeah. I cannot. Oh, just about. Oh. Yeah. So that that is so much more aggressive than a normal rig. Like that, if I was going to fish with a bait boat, that is what I would use. If the bottom's hard, I would use that all the time. And like baiting up um, with the boat in the in the springtime, I would put minimum bait in. You know, like 20 boilies. You know, maybe if, if you've got no bream or tench or roach, yeah, then you just can, a few. You can, yeah, if, if if you've got, I mean, if you've got any bream at all, you obviously know no pellet. Don't put pellet. <laughs> <laughs> pellet is bream attractor, yeah. isn't it? You know that. You will destroy it everywhere on that, I absolutely promise you. Looking really cool and uh, we're going to test it and see the difference. Good, good, yes. wicked. So now a week after the show, uh, we went fishing in France and uh, using the bait boat rig. We compared it uh, with our basic standard rigs and it definitely improved the catch rate, uh, about 30%. Uh, every carp was hooked great, uh, nice in the corner of the mount. For us it was really an improvement, just give it a try with your RT4 and have a good season for 2018.